So yesterday we were talking about Denzel Washington, and he made the statement that the uh, black crime is not, uh, that the uh, justice system is not responsible for the black crime in our communities. D.L. Hewley has confronted Denzel Washington over his views on the topic of racism. And get this, according to Hewley, everything and everyone is to blame for black men and women being underpaid, filling prisons, and doing crime. So what exactly did he say? 87% of men in prison are illiterate or have a learning disability. For context, in an interview with Black Tree TV, renowned actor Denzel Washington expressed his perspective on the complex issues facing the black community, emphasizing the crucial role of parents in shaping the futures of their children. Washington argued that the problems faced by black individuals in society are, in part, a result of misguidance within their own households. The actor shared anecdotes and observations to support his belief that instilling proper values and guidance at home can significantly impact the path that young individuals choose in life. Denzel Washington's interview began with a profound statement asserting, and I think it's more important to make headway in our own house. By the time the system comes into play, the damage is done. They're not locking up seven-year-olds. This sentiment encapsulates Washington's belief that meaningful change must start within individual households, emphasizing the role of parents in shaping the trajectory of their children's lives. He challenged the prevailing narrative that attributes societal issues solely to external systems, showcasing that proactive parenting can be a potent force in counteracting negative influences. During the conversation, Washington recounted a disconcerting experience from his recent visit to Chicago. He described encountering a group of young children on bikes with masks, colloquially referred to as little yummies. When he inquired about the term, he was informed that it referred to an 11-year-old care named Little Yummy, who had met a tragic end at the hands of a 14-year-old assailant. Washington's immediate response was a rhetorical question. Where was his father? This query serves as a poignant illustration of his conviction that parental involvement is critical in preventing children from succumbing to the perils of a misguided path. Washington reinforced his viewpoint through a personal reflection on his three closest friends, each of whom had faced legal troubles during their youth. He shared, I did talk about my three closest friends and they did 15 to 25, one did 28, this and that. I was the only one of the three that had a father in my life, even though my parents were together. Washington acknowledged that the system may be flawed, but argued that this realization should motivate individuals to focus on strengthening their own households. He stated, the system is rigged, but why all the more reason not to help it? Now D.L. Hewley had some different thoughts on this issue. In a separate broadcast on the D.L. Hewley show, comedian and commentator D.L. Hewley responded to Denzel offering his unique take, arguing that systemic issues, particularly within the judicial and educational systems, contribute significantly to the challenges faced by the black community. D.L. Hewley acknowledged Denzel Washington's point about individual choices playing a role in criminal behavior, stating, he's absolutely right. Every individual makes some decisions that can sometimes get them in trouble. Hewley, known for his sharp wit and humorous delivery, then proceeded to share his perspective on the systemic factors that contribute to the circumstances in which individuals find themselves. Hewley highlighted the inadequacies within the schooling and judicial systems, remarking, look at the schooling system. It's never been adequate or equal. With a comedic spin, he pondered if a report card for the education system might read, needs improvement, equality. In classic Hewley style, he suggested a transformative approach stating, what if we decided rather than jailing them, that we would give them access to people who understand how to help them work with the problems that they do have? A comedy coach, perhaps. The comedian drew attention to the issue of lead exposure in many inner city environments, affecting the mental capacity of individuals. 87% of men in prison are illiterate or have a learning disability. Addressing the disparities in sentencing, Hewley stated, why is a report came out less than a week ago that talked about how black men and Latin men get sentences that are lengthier, even though they commit the same crimes as white people? This observation, while serious in nature, was delivered by Hewley with a comedic flair, showcasing his ability to infuse humor into even the most contentious topics. Hewley emphasized the importance of creating opportunities for individuals to prevent crime effectively, stating, if they wanted to stop crime and they wanted to stop violence, they wouldn't just start jailing people, they would start making people have opportunities. 
In his humorous take, he even suggested maybe offer free therapy sessions or a coupon for a cooking class. Drawing a stark contrast between the response to crack addiction in the past and the current opioid crisis, Hewley pointed out the difference in how compassion and resources are extended to certain communities. He argued, now people are addicted to opiates. They do not. There's compassion. They met with compassion and love and resources. You know what they gave us? Jail. Jail will break you. In any case, despite Hewley not agreeing with him, some fans sided with Denzel on this issue. One particular fan commented, He is absolutely correct. It starts at home. He didn't absolve any responsibility from the F it up system. This many black men incarcerated is a direct reflection of the breakdown in our homes. It's a tough pill to swallow but necessary to rebuild. A second fan added, it does start at home, teach your kids respect, maybe they will understand. It's not just black families, it's all family and color, not just one color does crime, all colors do crime. At the same time, other fans were in agreement with D.L. Hewley's words. At the end of the day, if you have parents who raise themselves in large part due to the mass incarceration of people of color, doesn't that in itself still lead back to the prison system? Come on, Denzel. You are smarter than that, sir, one fan commented. A second fan added, I agree, but socioeconomic statuses are to blame as well. It's a systemic issue. When you have ignorant, no belittling intended, uneducated, poor mothers using the extremely limited resources to raise their children, they become a product of their poor environment. They raise menaces who don't care about life because they came from nothing and have nothing to look forward to. Many don't make it out the hood. It's sad because if they had better resources, they could be so much more. We can break that cycle by thinking outside that environment, even when you're stuck inside of it. It's hard, but it's possible. Anyway, despite his views on racism making some sense, D.L. Hewley has ruffled a lot of feathers among the black community. Born on March 6, 1963, D.L. Hewley stands as an iconic figure in American entertainment, a versatile actor and a sharp-witted stand-up comedian. His journey in the limelight began as the original host of Comic View, BET's stand-up comedy program, from 1992 to 1993. During those early years, he also made a memorable appearance in the third season of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, playing the role of Will's friend Keith Campbell. The late 90s saw Hewley taking center stage as he wrote, produced, and starred in The Hewleys, a television sitcom based on his real-life experiences living with his African-American family in an upscale neighborhood. A testament to his comedic prowess, he became a member of the original Kings of Comedy, a comedy tour that showcased the talents of some of the industry's finest. As the years unfolded, so did Hewley's career. In 2005, he ventured into the world of stand-up comedy albums with the release of D.L. Hewley, Notes from the GED section. He stepped into the world of hosting with a short-lived talk show on Comedy Central titled Weekends at the DL in 2008. The multifaceted entertainer took on the role of hosting the BET Awards and delivered a heartfelt eulogy during Bernie Mac's funeral, showcasing a more solemn side. Fast forward to June 2010, and Hewley found himself in the unique role of a special guest moderator on ABC's The View for a Day. His comedic talent continued to shine as he guest starred on TBS's Glory Days and temporarily took on the hosting duties for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. However, as much as he has been successful, D.L. Hewley has also been one controversial Hollywood figure. For starters, D.L. has an interesting relationship with women. While chatting with NPR News, the host asked D.L. if he liked women. D.L. responded, I don't like the way they process. No, I don't. I enjoy their company. I don't like the way that they reason. And then the conversation shifted to his thoughts about black women. D.L. described black women as the angriest group of people. He added, black women are angry, just in general, angry all the time. My assessment, out of just in my judgment, you either are in charge or they're in charge. So there's no kind of day that you get to rest. Additionally, just days after the announcement of Columbus Short's dismissal from ABC's hit series, Scandal, comedian D.L. Hewley found himself in hot water for comments he made in 2014 regarding Short's ongoing marital woes with estranged wife, Taney McCall Short. During a segment on his Radio 1 show, The D.L. Hewley Show, the 51-year-old had questioned the validity behind Short's misdemeanor spousal battery charge in which the actor reportedly choked his wife while she was sleeping. Hewley said, the star of one of the hottest dramas in the country chokes the F out of his wife? That doesn't ever happen.
I don't think it happened first off. Like the time Warren Sapp was getting ready to do the Super Bowl and some broad said that he essayed her. There are just as many examples of women lying on men in the middle of divorce proceedings to get what they want, as there are men who actually do anything. My point is if he did what she's alleging he did, she could still get all that she's going to have and not bring it up now when it damages his market value that she's going to be impacted by. If he loses that job, nobody's living in Calabasas anymore. I guarantee you three years from now she's going to be thinking, damn, I should have shut the F up, women always running out the mouth when they shouldn't. This B was thirsty. What, she gone go back to dancing? She gone of her money up? The audio clip, which has since been removed from the show's hosting site, drew a hailstorm of criticism, prompting a change.org petition, urging Hewley to publicly apologize for endangering the lives of black women who may be victims of domestic violence by encouraging them to remain silent. To add on to all that, in 2019, Terry Crews hit back at comedian D.L. Hewley during an exchange on Twitter about S.A., specifically how men with all those muscles should react if touched inappropriately. The Brooklyn Nine-Nine actor was responding to comments Hewley made about him during an interview in August 2018. Cruz, who is one of the few men to share a personal Hash Me Too story, alleged he was assaulted by former William Morris Endeavor agent Adam Bennett during an industry party in 2016. When asked his thoughts on the case, Hewley told Vlad TV he found it difficult to believe a dude with all those muscles couldn't tell an agent to not touch his behind. Cruz fired back at Hewley in a string of tweets. You told the world God gave me muscles so I could say no, the actor tweeted, along with a link to the interview. Are you implying I wanted to be essayed? I'm listening, sir. Hewley responded by saying, You saw the video. Cruz then shot back, Sir, you said I should have pushed him back or restrained him and I did all those things, but you act like I didn't. Were you there? Hewley went on to say Cruz should have been more forceful, writing, That's different than slapping the ish out of him. That led Cruz to say, So, sir, if you truly feel that is a correct way to deal with toxic behavior, should I slap the ish out of you? Cruz then told Hewley he had lost a fan with his comments. I have looked up to you my whole career as one of the funniest, most talented people I've ever seen, the actor wrote. I remember when I saw you warming up the crowd at Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and I thought this man is a genius, Cruz continued. But now you are an example of when comedy turns to sarcasm and cynicism, the actor wrote, and you find it extremely easy to get jokes at someone else's expense. You mock my success, but all I ever did was support you. Now, if you think you've heard the worst of Hewley's scandals, think again. D.L. Hewley has shared years ago about his serial cheating past and, most notoriously, admitted to conceiving a child through one of his affairs while married to his wife of now more than 30 years, LaDonna Hewley. After sharing the somber details of his then nine-month-old baby, born as a result of the affair, being k ed by his mistress's then-boyfriend, he is now coming forward with even more shocking details of how his wife came to be a source of financial assistance for his former side chick. In an interview with VLAD TV, D.L. Hewley explained that after he admitted to his wife that he was seeing another woman behind her back, the mistress, whom he hadn't communicated with for some time, came back into the picture to ask for money. Years later, the girl, it jammed her up too like it did me, he said. She started asking for money, she needed some money, and I told her my wife would have to take care of it, because I couldn't. After telling his mistress that his wife would clean up his mess, he shared that the ladies made an arrangement under one condition. So, she and my wife started talking and my wife started giving her money, he continued. The condition was that she could never ask me and my wife to take care of her, so my wife took it from my allowance that I've never gotten back. After sharing that to this very day, he isn't sure if his wife is still financially supporting his mistress, he added that he no longer gets an allowance. So, I don't know if she's still giving it to her or not, he said, but I know that I don't get that money anymore and I can't go, are you still? I can't do that. Later in the interview, he added that he was getting off of an airplane one time and saw both his wife and mistress. After he explained to his wife that she was the mother of his love child who died, he said his wife told her, sorry for your loss. In any case, despite saying he knows what's good for the black community, it seems like Hewley may have caused more problems than solutions. So, should we really pay attention to his views on racism? I'd love to know what you think, guys. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.